So the race in the first place was, uh, was looking like it was going to be Verstappen's, but there were safety cars in it. The first safety car, Valtteri Bottas, had a spin, which resulted then in a second safety car. Big crash between Stroll and Alonso. And uh, it could have been a lot worse, actually, this, this impact. And you never like to see cars crashing on a straight. It means that there's some scenario where someone's probably done something wrong or a big miscommunication between the two because you should have plenty of space to run side by side in a fair manner. Let's have a look at the two emerging in the background. There's Vettel and there's Stroll. Now, Stroll is close with, uh, with Alonso. Alonso's just pitted. He's taken advantage of a pit stop under safety car. He's got fresh tires and you can see he's tucked in right behind Lance Stroll. And as we play it through, Alonso just moves to the inside there. So he's got a nose to the inside and now Stroll thinks about recovering, moves across as well. And uh, Fernando is launched up, could have gone up and over, which we've seen in the past, but instead it's an absolutely beautiful wheelie. Back down he comes, hard into the barrier and uh, manages unbelievably to not retire the car and unbelievably to recover and actually finish seventh in the Grand Prix. So an amazing recovery. Stroll is out on the spot with the impact to his rear wing. That's come off, big puncture causes in the spin. But let's have a look in, in more detail as to what happens. Fundamentally, this is on Stroll for moving across in a reactionary way. But Alonso actually isn't very decisive in his move. He's right in now in the slipstream behind Stroll and he's just moves to the inside here and then look at his steering inputs he's no longer moving right the way across the track is arcing slightly to the right at this point as well but he's no longer making big inroads and in fact there's just almost a moment where he's hesitating here about whether to go fully to the inside or what's Stroll going to do and there's a bit of a hesitation from Alonso and by the time then Stroll adds his move to the left you get a big whack from the uh, the front wing of Alonso into the rear left of Stroll and there's quite a big load of force of the Alpine into the Aston Martin. It's not just a clip of the front wing, there's a fair chunk of car there. So there's, uh, it's a big overlap that Alonso's got, but there's still plenty of Alpine behind the, uh, the Aston Martin, causing the crash, causing the wheelie, and uh, up he goes, a bit scary. You can see, still trying to turn at this point, still trying to keep it out the barrier with front wheels fully up in the air by about a meter. That's not gonna work. And uh, down it comes, bam. Alonso's into the, uh, into the barrier and strolls out of the race. We can see it probably more clearly on board with, uh, with Stroll looking back at Fernando. So here we go. Stroll with Alonso there tucked in right behind the slipstream, pulls out quite late. And then he just sort of hovers in that moment. And then Stroll comes across as well and uh, causes the, the big impact. So it's... Stroll's movement that causes the impact, but Alonso probably doesn't help himself by not being as decisive as he has been in, uh, in most scenarios. Finally, we get to see Stroll on board, has a little look in the right mirror, knows Alonso's there, has a little look in the right again, then he looks in the left, and there we go, little twitch to the inside, and that is why Stroll got penalized. It's not what you want to do. See a flash in your mirror and then turn. That's what's going to cause the incident, and uh, fundamentally, it's a big one for Stroll and uh, he gets pitched in, into a spin and he's out. Stroll is to blame here. I think the stewards called this one right. It's marginal uh, because the, the, was it reactionary or was it simultaneous? It looks to me just a little bit reactionary from Stroll and we don't want to see that with cars going at high speed, about 180 miles per hour and then having these impacts. But I think also Alonso, because he was so close for so long and then didn't dive definitively out, was more hesitant than, uh, than we had. He opened the door for that collision as well. So Stroll to blame, but uh, it was a tight one for the two of them. And actually, Fernando wasn't particularly uh, hacked off with Lance Stroll for that. They're teammates next year, so it's just as well. Yeah, it was amazed that the car managed to complete the, the 31 laps until the end, and uh, we still finished P7 after being P17, so it was, it was a good race. And we also have seen incidents that Fernando has been uh, moving around this year as well. This was on board with Valtteri Bottas, last lap of Montreal and you can see Alonso defending with everything he's got missing a bit of power right now and he's just hovering all around the middle of the track kind of doing a similar thing to uh, to Valtteri only Valtteri is not quite as close and hasn't got quite the run and he blends off the throttle much earlier than uh, than Fernando does to avoid the collision Alonso got a penalty for that and it cost him some points and you can see on board with him 
checking the mirrors all over the place. There we go, left mirror, left mirror again. And he's just jiggling about the road. And that's not dissimilar to what Lance Stroll did, which caused the collision. Only Bottas backed out and the gaps were slightly bigger. Stroll has also done it to Valtteri Bottas this year. This is the, uh, the Aston Martin and the Alfa Romeo in Melbourne. And Stroll got a penalty for this as well. Again, moving late and uh, reactionary. That's why we, we get the penalties, because otherwise you can have a big collision. We don't want to see the collision. And once again, Stroll at fault, but it's not the first time we've seen a driver do that sort of thing. In fact, Alonso has done something similar and uh, it's just, driver's got to learn from it. Try and pick your line when you're defending and not just look in the mirror and wait for the driver behind to go. Otherwise you risk launching them in the air. I crashed. Okay, Lars, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. So that was Stroll out. Alonso, amazing job. Amazing job from him to carry on. He had a huge recovery in Baku a few years ago, described it as one of the best races of his career. I would have thought this one goes right alongside that or even better with the pace that he then showed, having made a pit stop, hobbled car, came back still quicker than Esteban Ocon, missing some downforce, missing his, his wing mirror and uh, managed to get seventh place. But that wing mirror missing was costly in the end and Haas protested the, uh, the cars of Perez and Alonso. Perez for having a dangling front wing end plate, Alonso for having a wing mirror dangling and then falling off. And that's obviously something that Haas have, have had trouble with so far this year as well. Three black and orange uh, warning flags for Magnussen, which has resulted in have him having to pit and uh, make an extra, extra stop to repair those parts, costing him points. They basically felt aggrieved that the others weren't having the same. And you can partly you can see their point, but also very tough on Fernando Alonso there, who's managed to drive on, hasn't received a black and orange flag, no warning from the race director that he had to pit because they thought it was unsafe, only after the race, and he copped a 30 second penalty for it as a result. The stewards deemed it was unsafe, the race director basically didn't. There was a, a miscommunication amongst the FIA, which I think is particularly hard on Alonso because potentially if they thought there was a black and orange flag earlier on, they could have done something about it, maybe under safety car, maybe if there's a late safety car, it could have changed things. But just to do it after the event seems like a really tough way of going about it. Perez got away with it because uh, that didn't seem to be a problem. Red Bull alerted Joe Bauer, the FIA, earlier on and, uh, and he gave them the OK. Alonso's not happy with the decision. One of his best ever drives, maybe the best driver of the season, ends up being for nothing and I'm sure the drivers are going to talk about it because we've seen now some inconsistency across all parts of, of the stewarding but this black and orange flag seems to have particularly affected Haas that's why they're not happy about it there's been different race directors as well it was Eduardo Freitas that gave Magnussen the black and orange flag it's now Niels Wittig that is uh, that is race directing the rest of the season and he seems to be a bit more hesitant with the black and orange flag that is the problem of having two race directors. They have different approaches, and uh, that's why the inconsistencies sometimes creep in. Haas aggrieved, and now Alonso's aggrieved. So that was a look at the Stroll Alonso crash that brought out the second safety car of the Grand Prix. But there were many brilliant recovery drives in Austin. Verstappen winning, Vettel charging back through, as were Leclerc and Perez. For more on that, check it out on F1 TV.